Veronica Greenfield, known as Ronnie Spector, was an American singer who formed the girl group The Ronettes in 1957 with her elder sister Estelle Bennett and their cousin Nedra Talley. Bennett fronted the group while record producer Phil Spector produced the majority of their recording output. The two were married in 1968 and separated in 1972. Bennett sang lead on the Ronettes' string of hits in the early to mid-1960s, including Be My Baby, Baby, I Love You, The Best Part of Breaking Up, and Walking in the Rain. In 1964, she launched a solo career with the single So Young. After 1980, she released five studio albums, Siren, Unfinished Business, Something's Gonna Happen, Last of the Rock Stars, and English Heart. Bennett also recorded one extended play, She Talks to Rainbows. In 1986, she experienced a career resurgence when she was featured on Eddie Money's song Take Me Home Tonight. Bennett was sometimes referred to as the original bad girl of rock and roll. In 1990, she published a memoir, Be My Baby, How I Survived Mascara, Miniskirts, and Madness, or, My Life is a Fabulous Renette. In 2007, she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of the Ronettes. The Ronettes became a popular live attraction around the greater New York area in the early 1960s. Looking for a recording contract, they initially were signed to Colpix Records and produced by Stu Phillips. After releasing a few singles on Colpix without success, they tracked down record producer Phil Spector, who signed them to his label Phyllis Records in 1963. Their relationship with Spector brought chart success with Be My Baby, Baby, I Love You, the best part of breaking up, Do I Love You? and Walking in the Rain. The group had two top 100 hits in 1965 with Born to Be Together and Is This What I Get for Loving You. In 1965, the Ronettes were voted the third top singing group in England behind the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. They supported and toured with the Beatles on their 1966 US tour. The group's last single, I Can Hear Music, on the Phyllis Records label, was released in the fall of 1966. Instead of recording on the West Coast, the Ronettes returned to New York City with producer Jeff Barry. The Ronettes broke up in early 1967, following a European concert tour that included their appearance at the Moonlight Lounge, in Gelnhausen, Germany, where they entertained U.S. military personnel. Spectre's 1960s recording You Came, You Saw, You Conquered, credited as the Ronettes featuring the voice of Veronica, appeared in 1969 on Herb Alpert's A&M Records label, with Oh I Love You an old Ronette's B-side, as the flip. Her vocals were used for the lead and backing vocals. Phil Spector kept many of the group's unreleased songs in the vault for years. In February 1971, during Phil Spector's tenure as head of A&R at Apple Records, Spector recorded the single Try Some, Buy Some Slash Tandoori Chicken at Abbey Road Studios, released as Apple 33 in the UK and Apple 1832 in the US. The A-side was written by George Harrison, and produced by both him and Spector. Although the single was not a big hit, its backing track was used two years later for Harrison's own version of the song, on his chart-topping Living in the Material World album. Try Some, by Some had another lasting influence when John Lennon recorded Happy Christmas later the same year and asked Spector to reproduce the mandolin-laden wall of sound he had created for Spector's single. Lennon liked the rockabilly B-side too, he sang it at his birthday party in New York City in October 1971. Spector recorded other Harrison songs during those London sessions minus including You and When Every Song Is Sung minus but her versions were never released, even though a full album had been planned. In 1973, Spector reformed the Ronettes with two new members. They released a few singles on Buddha Records. The records failed to chart and by 1975, Spector was recording as a solo act. She released the single You'd Be Good For Me on Tomcat Records in 1975. In 1976, Spectre sang a duet with Southside Johnny on the recording You Mean So Much To Me, penned by Southside's longtime friend Bruce Springsteen and produced by Steven Van Zandt of the E Street Band. This was the final track on the Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes debut album I Don't Want To Go Home. She also made appearances with the band the following year, including a cover version of Billy Joel's 1976 track Say Goodbye To Hollywood. In her book, Spectre recounted several abortive attempts to recapture mainstream success throughout the 1970s and early 1980s, during which time she was widely perceived as an oldies act. She recorded her first solo album in 1980, produced by Genia Raven, 
which was a prelude to her work with Joey Ramone in the late 1990s. Bennett and Phil Spector began having an affair soon after she was signed to his label in 1963. Early in their relationship, she was unaware that he was married. Once, Bennett was busted by house detectives for prostitution at the Delmonico Hotel in New York City after leaving a room they had booked. She was allowed to call Spectre, who threatened the hotel, and then they allowed her to leave. After Spectre divorced his wife in 1965, he purchased a home in Beverly Hills, where he lived with Bennett. They married at Beverly Hills City Hall on April 14, 1968. Bennett changed her surname and became known as Ronnie Spector. Their son Dante Philip was adopted in 1969. Two years later, Phil surprised her for Christmas with adopted twins, Louie and Gary. Spector revealed in her 1990 memoir, Be My Baby, that after they married, Phil subjected her to years of psychological torment and sabotaged her career by forbidding her to perform. He surrounded her house with barbed wire and guard dogs, and confiscated her shoes to prevent her from leaving. On the rare occasions he allowed her out alone, she had to drive with a life-size dummy of Phil. Spectre stated that Phil installed a gold coffin with a glass top in the basement, promising that he would kill her and display her corpse if she ever left him. She began drinking and attending Alcoholics Anonymous meetings to escape the house. In 1972, Spectre fled their mansion barefoot and without any belongings with the help of her mother. I knew that if I didn't leave I was going to die there, she said. In their 1974 divorce settlement, Ronnie forfeited all future record earnings after Phil threatened to have a hitman kill her. She received $25,000, a used car, and monthly alimony of $2,500 for five years. Spectre later testified that Phil had frequently pulled a gun on her during their marriage and threatened to kill her unless she surrendered custody of their children. Spectre tried to rebuild her career, keeping his surname professionally because I needed any way I could to get back in. I'd been kept away so long. But Phil hired lawyers to prevent her singing her classic hit songs and denied her royalties. In 1988, Spectre and the other Runettes sued Phil for $10 million in damages, rescission of the contract, the return of the Masters, and recoupment of money received from the sale of Runettes Masters. It took 10 years for the case to make it to trial, and after a prolonged legal battle, Phil was ordered to pay Spectre over $1 million in royalties. In 1982, Spectre married her manager Jonathan Greenfield. They lived in Danbury, Connecticut with their two sons, Austin Drew and Jason Charles. Spectre died from cancer on January 12, 2022, at the age of 78.